Hello! A secret corporation is conducting experiments on humans. They are willing to go to any lengths and kidnap children to carry out their inhumane experiments. But once they raise the second generation of people with superpowers, their plan gets out of hand. It's now a second fugitive who finds herself among ordinary people. Her powers begin to show. So the girl decides to escape from imprisonment in the labs, by any means necessary. A frightened little girl stands inside a barn. Some of the animals are dead, and the girl's hands are bloody. She backs up and hears her mother's voice out of nowhere. The girl is suddenly overcome by a terrible headache, and the guard dog breaks off its chain and leaps right at her. Mi Young wakes up from the nightmare. She and the rest of the students are on a bus, cheerfully singing songs. The girl's roommate hints that she knows about her friend's relationship with her boyfriend. Mi Young covertly puts her hand on her stomach. Soon the passengers become tired and begin to doze off. The bus turns off the highway and stops in an unfamiliar, deserted place. Suddenly, the room fills with sleeping gas and masked men prevent anyone from getting out. Mi Young is carried outside. When she wakes up, she hears a news report about their bus. It has fallen off a cliff. All the passengers are dead. An unfamiliar woman walks up to Mi Young and starts petting her on the head. She knows that the girl is pregnant and informs her that she will soon have twins. The woman's twin sister with shorter hair also walks up to the operating table. Mi Young doesn't understand what's going on. Yeah. Many years pass, and the Ark Laboratory is attacked by armed men with the Dogu mark on their wrists. They fill the rooms with gas and kill everyone inside, and then arrive in front of huge locked doors. When they finish their job and leave, a teenage girl wakes up among the corpses in the ruined laboratory. She tears off the medical catheters and walks out barefoot into the snow. It appears that she has never left her confinement before. She is overcome by a headache, and everything around her begins to levitate. In a different part of Korea, a delegation from the Ark organization drives up to a seaside mansion. Their leader, Zhang, is standing by the window when the veins on his neck suddenly swell up. Beck, the owner of the mansion, meets her old acquaintance and immediately asks about the massacre at the Ark. Beck used to be the director of the organization, but is now retired. Zhang replies that the Dogu continue to plunder their laboratories all over the world, and no one knows why they're doing this. Not many people know about the secret project at all, so it must be either Zhang's or one of the ex-director's people who have leaked the information. Beck suggests that the guy conduct an investigation, but he is convinced that the attack was carried out from the inside. One of the girls, who was being experimented on, is missing. The fugitive continues to wander through the nearby woods and discovers a highway. She walks right in the middle of the road and almost gets hit by a minibus. The car stops, and the driver tries to find out who she is. Having received no answer, he orders to get her inside. A group of bandits are already holding a woman, Ki Young Hee, hostage. Having beaten her up and attempting to blackmail her, the odd stranger remains silent. But it turns out that the girl has easily memorized the license plate number. The bandits don't want to have any witnesses. For her protests, Ki Young Hee gets punched again by the perpetrators. They keep harassing the teenager, but all she says is, let go of me and hands off, and then actually uses her powers. She easily breaks her abuser's arms and turns the car into scrap metal as they are driving. Ki Young Hee gets out of the damaged car, where she sees that the stranger is about to kill one of the bandits. She asks her not to do that and calls an ambulance with the bandit's phone. The doctors trace their location and send a rescue team, but Ki Young Hee doesn't wait for them to arrive and walks away. After some thought, she decides to take the stranger with her and makes a call to a family friend, Dr. Pyung. When he arrives, the bloodied girl falls unconscious, and the man treats her wounds a little later. He runs his own veterinary clinic and has previously treated people illegally and rescued Kyung Hee's father many times. He is very surprised that the serious injuries are healing on the injured woman's body with great speed. The doctor suggests that Kyung Hee go to the police, but the girl refuses and takes the teenager to her home. At this time, somewhere in Central Asia, a woman in uniform sits in the middle of a massacre in a church. Sergeant Choi Hyun has eliminated everyone inside and shoots several more times in the head of one of the girls lying on the floor. After calling in a cleanup team, she gets out and gets in the car with her partner, Tom. If you keep insisting on going in alone, you're gonna die. Do you have a death wish or something? You should have waited for me. 
Do you plan on keeping this up with our backup? She is very annoyed by her subordinate, who worries too much and chats constantly. The sergeant crosses off another victim with superpowers in her notebook. At home, she removes bullets and shrapnel from her body, and her wounds heal just as quickly, with dark veins showing brightly on her arm. In anger, she hits the wall with her fist, and they become normal. Afterwards, Choi Hyun sits down in front of her laptop and absorbs the information she needs for her witch hunt with incredible speed. Just then, she receives a message from Beck. Meanwhile, Kyung Hee is taking her new acquaintance home in a car. The girl is excited about the wind and the fields like a child, and the shiny advertisement sign completely shocks her. Upon arrival, they are greeted by Kyung Hee's younger brother. Daegil gets into their usual altercation with his sister, but the guest mistakes it for an attack and tries to protect her new friend. Kyung Hee has to explain that she's safe and her brother doesn't want to hurt her. At the dinner table, the stranger doesn't eat or drink anything. The relatives once again have a conflict and slap each other. Their house has never known a family harmony. After her father's death, Kyung Hee has returned home from America and now refuses to sell the house to the bandits, for which they tried to drag her out into the woods. <laughs> While they argue, the girl pounces on the food and eats everything she can get her hands on. Kyung Hee escorts her to her room and gives her spare clothes. The girl really likes her new surroundings, and Kyung Hee thanks her guest for saving her life from the bandits. Director Beck hosts Choi Hyun and her partner. She tells the hunters that the girl who escaped from the Ark under the nickname Ark 1 Datum Point, Tayoka, is the greatest achievement in their 40-year-long experiment. She is one of the two daughters of the very girl who was kidnapped from the bus years ago. The embryo was extracted from Mi Young's body, cloned, and planted back as twins. There is another runaway girl with superpowers, Gu Jae Yoon, from the Shanghai lab. She made it to Korea, but her trail was lost from there. The girl is dependent on a special drug, so she's not a threat yet. The sergeant accepts the dangerous assignment. All of the Ark children have a chip built into their brains that analyzes their condition and transmits their location. They leave with a tracking device, and along the way notice they are already being chased. They get away from the pursuers and ram into them, catching the bandits off guard. The two men come out and attack, using their enormous strength. Tom also happens to be one of the mutants and easily repels their attacks. Using the car door as a shield, he knocks them both out and the sergeant reveals that she used to work for the agency too. They pick up a signal and go after the fugitive. The girl, meanwhile, is suffering from a headache in her bedroom. Her nose is bleeding and her head is filled with fragments of memories from the laboratory and a strange voice calling her to come to her mother. She manages to calm down when bandits pull up to the house. They intend to take over the house, and Ki Young Hee comes out with a shotgun to confront them. The mob leader, Yang Du, provokes the girl and blames her for the death of four of his guys after the car incident. He assumes that someone was helping Ki Young Hee and gives the signal for his men to attack. The woman fires into the air, but gets surrounded and has her weapon taken away. The brother with the bat tries to help his sister, but is beaten and is also taken hostage. They don't find anybody else in the house, and Yang Du offers to sign the land sale agreement. He is willing to pay good money, but Kyung Hee refuses to part with her father's house. <laughs> the bandits beat up the owners of the house while their guest observes the scene from the roof. She goes to the very edge and jumps down, while Yang Du and his men stand in shock. The girl approaches the man who was beating her friends and launches his fat body flying with a single blow. With inhuman strength, she beats and injures the rest of the scoundrels, and Kyung Hee stops her from killing the leader again. The woman slaps Yang Du in the face, letting him escape and never come back. When Dai Gil comes to his senses, he immediately starts planning on how to get a lot of views on YouTube by posting a video of his guest's abilities. Sergeant Choi Hyung and Tom also find the right house but refrain from attacking for now. They meet up with Zhang, who had sent his people to monitor them. They share a common past, and Zhang asks why Choi has returned and is now working for Beck. The retired director is playing dirty and is clearly hiding something. It is Gu Jia Yoon who is responsible for plundering the laboratories all over the world. Choi Hyung listens, but remains adamant. She orders him to stop following her, and leaves. The Dogu squad has also learned about the surviving girl and sets out after her. Later, Yang Du and his gang visit the veterinary clinic. They threaten to cut off Dr. Pyong's hand if he doesn't tell them about Kyung Hee's new friend. After torturing him, they leave. 
The bandits now also have a customer who is willing to pay for catching the girl. Di Gill shows his new acquaintance various videos in the car and explains how together they can make a lot of money from views. But the girl is only interested in the mukbang meal she sees on the screen. At the supermarket, she feels like she's in a fairy tale and pounces on the tasting stand. Kyung Hee gets a call from Dr. Pyong and she rushes to his aid. The man's fingers were chopped off, but they managed to sew them back on at the hospital. He convinces Kyung Hee to part with the dangerous stranger before the bandits catch up with them. As the girl is trying to leave, Tom stops her, and Choi Hyun sits down next to her. Yong Du and his gang are visited by the Dogu. They kill all their henchmen and interrogate the boss about the fugitive. Dai Gil sits on the roof of the house with her and tries to think of the tricks that they could upload to the internet. The girl gradually learns how to talk. <laughs> Choi Hyun shows Kyung Hee the video of the runaway girl killing people from the lab. She assures her that the girl is dangerous, and if she doesn't want her brother to get hurt, Kyung Hee must cooperate. She and Tom arm themselves. Kyung Hee returns home and tells her friends to flee. At that time, the Dogu and Yong Du's gang pull up to the house together. Dai Gil sends his guest away and returns home to help his sister, who has once again gone outside with a shotgun. This time, Yong Du doesn't hesitate and immediately kills the girl with his shotgun. The sergeant orders to open fire, and her assistant fires two rockets into the house, destroying it. Along with this begin the fireworks, and one of the dogu goes after the shooter with two blades in hand. The girl quickly takes care of the rival. Daigil mourns his sister and almost gets himself shot when Choi Hyun shoots at Yong Du from the roof. The sergeant demands that the bandits get out before the mutant battle begins. The Dogu turn the fence into lethal spears and drive them through the mafia. Tom and sergeant shoot back at the mutants, who move with incredible speed. Choi Hyun kills one of them by shooting it in the head. The other rival injures and knocks the woman off the roof. She lands next to Dai Gil, who is being shot at by the wounded Yong Du. Choi Hyun tries to cover him with her body, but it doesn't work, and the guy collapses. Meanwhile, their friend doesn't manage to get very far away and runs into the dogu with blades in the woods. The mercenary attacks her, but the girl easily stops and kills the woman. She realizes that her friends are in danger and goes back. Choi Hyun is furious at the deaths of the two civilians and gets into a fight with the dogu. Tom gets thrown far aside, but the woman manages to overcome the attacker and stabs him in the throat. However, his partner attacks from behind and inflicts numerous wounds on the sergeant. The pair prepare to kill Choi Hyun, but the shotgun misfires, and Tom has time to recover and come to the rescue. He saves the sergeant in the final jump, yet any wounds on the two Dogu's bodies heal in seconds. The surviving girl finally reaches the battle site. The guy immediately receives the answer. His arm explodes from an energy volley, and any attacks the silent witch repels with just her left arm. She sees the dead bodies of the brother and sister and breaks the legs of Yang Du, who is still trying to crawl away. The girl with the knife attacks again, but all her attempts backfire. When the boy manages to grow a new arm, he telepathically lifts up the stones for an attack, but the girl intercepts them and tears his body apart with an attack of a thousand blows of tiny shards. The last surviving Dogu realizes that it's useless to attack, and a black SUV pulls up to her. From it appears Gu Jiayun, who has had a similar fate. She claims to know the girl well. Jiayun executes her subordinate and explains to her sister that she was badly wounded and couldn't come for her at the Ark in person. That's why she sent the mercenaries. She knew that her sister wouldn't let herself be killed because of her special strength though. They were separated at birth, and Gu Jiayun has rescued the girl to find their mother together. She holds out her hand, but instead the girl approaches the bodies of her murdered friends. Gu Jiayun is surprised, but intends to help. She gives her sister a substance that can revive one of them, yet that person will become a mutant, just like her. They both hear the groans of Yang Du, who seems to have also been turned into a mutant by the Dogu. He's at death's door and is writhing in agony. Realizing that she is right, the girl hesitates to give her friend a fate like hers. She sinks to her knees bitterly, and Gu Jiayun injects a red serum into her neck. Her sister loses consciousness and is taken away in a car. At the mansion, the director who had started the whole experiment tells her daughter that the twins have now met, and they must be ready, for they will soon come for their mother, who is imprisoned. As always, look for the name of the movie in the video description. In the meantime, let us know in the comments, 
What abilities do you think the sister's mother has? And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video so that more awesome stories will come out as often as possible.